beneath Nelson's monument in Trafalgar Square, London's Warships Week is launched. The target is 125 million pounds, sufficient to provide a fleet larger than the entire Nazi Navy. A large model of the superstructure of a battleship, complete with heavy and AA guns, juts out into the square. It is from the bridge of HMS Trafalgar that the huge crowd of Londoners hears the rousing speech of Mr. A.B. Alexander, First Lord of the Admiralty. This is London calling today, not to the world, but to its own citizens. England needs your help, and London has always helped. From the word go, money came pouring in. Licking saving stamps had a lot of people reflecting on what might happen if the Navy didn't get more ships. The results today remove all doubt. The second day of London's pageantry sees a mile-long procession passing St Paul's Cathedral on its long parade through London's historic highways. The ATS has its own drum and bugle band. Detachments from all the armed forces and civil defence services, nearly 2,000 strong, march through strangely silent, crowd-lined streets. The undemonstrative Londoner is expressing his admiration in a much more practical way. He's out to break records. Sir John Laurie, the Lord Mayor, takes a salute as a large contingent from the RAF passes by. The turnout and marching of the women's services are notable features of the parade. And now reminiscent of those ever to be remembered Lord Mayor shows come the lorry drawn exhibits headed by a manned lifeboat. The model of a wooden man of war with members of the crew in old uniforms. The conning tower of an H class submarine. It's a great day for the youngsters. Their eyes stand out like organ stops when the big bombs go by. And by blackout time on that first day, 28 millions had come in. And although we didn't cheer, it made us feel good. <laughs>